The trip to the cemetery is a trip you don't come back from. So for some, this last ride has to be the best. The classiest wheels, the most spacious interior, and a chauffeur. It takes a lot of work to make a standard vehicle into one of these. They are the work of AccuBuilt, North America's largest funeral coach builder. The president here is Don Kuzakria. In a typical year, we'll build anywhere from 1,250 to 1,400 funeral vehicles. This street machine will be totally transformed into a single-purpose, casket-carrying luxury funeral coach. To do this, they take perfectly good Cadillacs and Lincoln Town cars, cut them in half, and rebuild them from scratch. Well, although these cars may look like regular Cadillacs, they're far from it. First, they cut the body away, from the windshield to the back bumper. They extend the chassis, raise the roof, and fit an all-steel roll cage into the frame. They also weld steel reinforcements on key parts of the chassis. This adds a lot of weight to the car, and that, coupled with the fact that it's oversized, could make the coach prone to rollovers. But since funeral coaches don't barrel down the road at top speeds, the addition of the roll cage is more like a safety feature, a protection against a freak accident. One of Don's souped-up caddies was put to the test. From what I was told, a pickup truck ran a stop sign at a T intersection, hit the funeral coach and pushed it over the side of an embankment, and it rolled down, I think, at least you know, 100 or 150 feet, something like that. It landed on its wheels, and it was able to be driven. Once the roll cage is completed, custom body panels are mounted. They use an 850-ton Erie press to create the exterior door from a single flat piece of steel and a six-axis robotic laser to cut three-dimensional formed pieces like interior panels. The advantage of that is you get a much more precise part, you get a much stronger part, you get a part that's less likely to rust. They use a high-tech CNC wood router to guarantee a perfect fit of panels inside each of their funeral coaches. The metal is finished and then painted in sealed downdraft chambers. Funeral coaches are not all black or gray. If a funeral home wants to add a coach to its fleet, the paint shop may have to match a very specific color, even one that was last used in the 70s. Next comes the wiring. This is all hand done. They use hundreds of meters of electric cable in each vehicle. They spray on a special glue to hold the vinyl top. The vinyl was chosen from dozens of colors and then custom cut. Next, plain fabric pieces are cut using a computerized template and the work on the interior begins. The trim shop prepares some of the interior fabric panels using a specialized embroidery machine with nine needles capable of doing 1,200 stitches a minute. It needs to go fast since there are 480,000 stitches in each of the 45 patterns available. They check that all mechanical functions work, like the slide-out casket table. Then they polish the exterior to make the vehicle shine. It looks great, but it's not ready to leave the building just yet. The alignment needs to be done to make sure the vehicle rides as straight and smooth as it looks. Once a funeral coach gets the final stamp of approval, it's on its way. The vehicle has to look dignified, it has to be respectful, but it also has to function, you know, on, on a 100% on a reliability basis. So, the dead can finally rest in peace. But what of the living? 